Well, here we are at the AI Summit. With me today is Ellie Lippi from Blue Yonder. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, Chuck. So tell me, you're involved in supply chain. Where on earth does AI fit in the supply chain? Oh, where doesn't it fit in the supply chain? Um, this is a really exciting time to explore all the different use cases for machine learning and, and artificial intelligence within the supply chain. There are some more popular and maybe more mature use cases, such as demand forecasting, uh, and, and we can talk a bit more about that, but um, it is an active area of exploration, both for us at Blue Yonder, but also for our customers to explore what does machine learning look like for them? What are the business benefits for them? Because machine learning, yes, it's a very exciting technique to see how it might improve key performance indicators, but it's also a change in process for a lot of our customers. So understanding if humans are no longer as hands-on or in the weeds on menial tasks, bringing automation front and center through artificial intelligence, through machine learning, is now going to redefine the role of the planner, right? To have them be more strategically placed as well. But, but supply chain is a big deal. I mean, it's, 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 it's large. Where, where does AI start in that? Uh, well, within supply chain, you'll have so many different roles and in, in industries that are thinking about machine learning, right? So at Blue Yonder, we have thousands of customers globally spanning different industries. So you'll have a lot of our retail customers trying to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to inform smarter decisions on automated replenishment, on pricing strategies. You'll also see this go up the supply chain too, though, to our distributors, to our manufacturers, to understand how can we predict uh, smarter times of arrival? How can we predict dynamic parameters in the supply chain, like expected yield, uh, and, and a few other use cases like this. But it is, there really is something for everybody when it comes to what is going on with machine learning within supply chain. So is it that machine learning is coming in and actually automating things, or is it actually doing things that people can't physically do? So I think there are a couple components to this, right? Today, without machine learning, if we look at maybe a, a less mature uh, supply chain management style customer, uh, they are trying to do all of these activities themselves, right? But what we're realizing is that approach is quite flawed. So if we take an example of a machine learning use case, predicting demand, what am I going to sell tomorrow? What am I going to sell next week? How many items do I need to be prepared to stock to ultimately meet my customer demand? Today, this is a very manually intensive task for our customers. So we have some simpler technical approaches to help forecast what that demand is going to be, but it needs to have human involvement. It needs to have planners coming in and tuning the different algorithms, reviewing different forecasts before they get published to supply, before they're informing decisions. So it really does require collaboration between simple approach and planner. Now when you bring machine learning into the mix, however, it means that planners do not need to go into the nitty gritty details anymore. They don't need to make, some of these decisions can, can reach huge volumes, right? Thousands, maybe even millions of decisions that planners need to make every single day. They're no longer tasked to go into the nitty gritty details. So when that happens, machine learning does enable the automation of key processes like demand forecasting and then opens the door for even automation and, and decisions that you're making on top of that. Um, but it absolutely goes hand in hand. So how do they validate that it was right? <laughs> That's a great question. So I think that there's general awareness that machine learning is playing a very exciting role within supply chain. And our, our customers, the clients we work with, are aware of this and, and they're excited by it. But trusting machine learning is a very, very big topic, right? And you don't want to take on a, a new approach to continuing our example of demand forecasting, uh, if you're ultimately not going to, to use it the way it's intended, right? If it's automating the demand forecasting process, yet humans are still coming in and, and disagreeing with it, overriding it, we've actually conducted a few studies at Blue Yonder where we went in to analyze how a customer was using our machine learning based forecasting capabilities. And we saw that the majority of the time when they chose to override some of these predictions, it actually worsened the result for them. Well, that must make you feel really good. <laughs> it does, it felt like it was validating of our, our Blue Yonder strategy, absolutely. But it is, it takes some time, right, to build trust with machine learning. Um, so it absolutely is a process, especially in the first few months of, of leveraging it, but you do need to make a, a bit of a leap of faith because this is exactly what the data is supporting, right? These machine learning techniques, hands off, fully automated, are in majority of situations doing a better job than planners were doing previously with traditional techniques. So where is it now? Is it a, is it a tool and then evolves to an automation capability or is it always going to be 
basically a, a, a tool and there's still people involved somewhere? There's, there's definitely roles for people to still be involved within the machine learning space. Um, so it, it really depends on the application, right? So within demand forecasting, the role of the planner is less on disagreeing with the forecast after the fact, but rather helping to make sure that the data informing it and teaching the machine learning model itself is accurate, is up to date, is reflective of a business reality, right? Which is ultimately what machine learning is, is trying to learn itself. So when you go into a company, someone says, okay, we're going to go with Blue Yonder, and then you deal with the actual people who have to deploy it, <laughs> yep. do they say, I don't buy into this, and then they get surprised later? It's, it's change management, so I think that, that there is excitement going into these projects. There is an awareness, especially coming out of COVID, right, that there are limitations to these traditional processes. That supply chain has been so heavily disrupted in the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. It's time to heavily disrupt supply chain management and approaches as well, right? So we see when we start working with customers, there, there is hesitation but excitement. So there's a willingness to understand, well, what is this new approach going to look like for me? Um, but again, it's, it's a learning curve, it takes some time. Um, and in the first few months of actually utilizing the service and seeing my planners are no longer hands-on and involved with generating the forecast itself, but they're involved in, in very specific situations in reviewing the forecast, um, then it, it speaks for itself. I mean, it's translating immediately to business value. So what happens to companies that don't do this? Well, I would say every company that, that Blue Yonder's working with right now is either already leveraging machine learning or they're in talks and discussion with us, right? Everyone's asking the question of what would machine learning look like for me? What are the use cases for my particular business where it's going to bring me value? So I would say that almost every, almost every customer that we're interacting with is curious, is very ML curious, would, would be the theme of this year, I would say. And do they do a proof of concept and then scale, or do they tend to take one little area and work on that area and then go to another area? What, how does it usually work? We see a mix. So we see, uh, since, since Blue Yonder actually has already quite a big customer base using machine learning, it's, it's clearly tried and tested, at least as uh, how Blue Yonder delivers it. Um, we see some customers just noticing that, that some of their competitors are already leveraging our service and, and getting good results out of it, so therefore they trust it. Others who are a bit more conservative, a bit more timid, uh, would want to start with a POC, of course. So a year from now, what will we be talking about? Uh, a year from now. I know, so it's I, like, like way blue sky. <laughs> a year from now, hopefully not uh, the pandemic anymore. <laughs> um, a year from now, machine learning is, is definitely still going to be in the conversation. I think that this is translating more to a, not is there value of bringing machine learning into the supply chain? That's not debatable anymore. It's more, how are we going to adopt it, right? So as, as you've been saying, assisting customers and entrusting machine learning, using it strategically and optimally as intended. But I'd say a, another exciting space is that what machine learning is doing is it's not only giving you more accurate, more precise predictions, but it's informing a very risk-aware understanding of what the future might look like. So it's not just improving prediction quality, but improving the decisions that we're making on top of those predictions. And I think that's going to be a very exciting space. Different optimization engines that are going to be fed by these machine learning models. Well, I look forward to talking to you next year. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Thank you.